Hi, I'm Sean Chubb, the Pasture to Profit Consultant in Wales and the Midlands. And as this is the time of year that farmers start to think about the autumn reef seeds, I thought I'd take this opportunity to go through some options that are available to you if you're also wanting to mitigate risks of having a feed shortage through the summer months as a result of a prolonged dry period. Now the approach I take is evolution, not revolution. So what I mean by evolution is we're just attaching another component to your system, whereas revolution would be changing it completely. I've got a few options here that uh, are available to you, and I'll go through each one of them and give a bit of an um, explanation and give you the advantages and disadvantages. So the first one I have is ryegrass and clover. So if you currently don't have clover in your sward, what we want you to do is uh, get that percentage of clover in your sward up to about 20 to 30 percent. The advantages of clover is that it has a higher optimum growing temperature than ryegrass. So as the summer months start coming in and the heat comes in, the, the ryegrass is going to start to slow in its growth rate. But the clover will be able to come through and, and uh, keep that, that growth up there and provide a good high quality feed. The other advantage to clover is that it also fixes nitrogen. So it will be able to supply nitrogen to the grass around it. The disadvantages to clover is that it uh, if you so, uh, apply high levels of nitrogen, you'll be suppressing the ability to, to fix nitrogen or even suppressing the clover in the sward altogether. The other disadvantage to clover is that it's very susceptible to sprays. So if you have a specific uh, weed spray management plan on your farm, you might need to either change the timing of your spraying or the spray itself to ensure that you don't wipe out the clover. The next option I have here is supplement feed on hand. So what I'm talking about here is having a specific amount of feed set aside for the summer months. So if we take an example of a 100 hectare farm with 300 cows, if we have 300 bales of silage on hand, uh, that will enable us to feed 8 kgs of dry matter of grass, 8 kgs of dry matter of silage, and a kg of uh, concentrate for 4 weeks. And over that 4 week period we would have reduced our demand of grass down to 24 kgs Per hectare so hopefully we'll be able to stop us from eating into our wedge. So the advantages of this is that it's relatively cheap and if we don't use the silage bales over the summer months we can roll that over to the winter time or into the shoulder periods uh, and also the, uh, the final advantage is that we won't be opening and shutting the clamp multiple times so we have to keep quality um, in our feed going forward. The disadvantages is that uh, through having more supplement feed on hand in terms of silage that will mean that we'll either need to increase our land area or reduce our stocking rate to ensure we have enough feed made on platform without pinching from the summer uh, from the winter months. Uh, if we're going to be buying it in, we could be buying in uh, poorer quality feed than what we need at that time of the year or we might be buying in other people's weeds as well. The next option I have is changing of the summer grazing management. So there's three options here, the first one being rolling deferred. So here what we want to do is when there's a time of uncertainty, we keep uh, uncertainty of growth, we keep any surplus for seven to 10 days. If at the end of that time period there's still a surplus, we take that paddock and we bail it into silage and get that paddock back into rotation. Uh, if there's a shortage, then we pull that paddock into the rotation and it will enable us to extend out our rotation. So the advantage here is that uh, you get, uh, you be able to prolong the amount of grass in the diet for a little bit longer, but the shortfall, uh, the disadvantage here is that uh, once the shortfall does come, you're only going to be able to cover it for a very short amount of time. The next option is lift the average farm cover going into summer. So what we want to do there is slow down our rotation, keep our demand slightly below supply, and then um, build up our covers to their full third leaf stage. So the advantage here is that we're going to be having more uh, more grass on the platform so as it starts to dry down we can uh, keep the level of grass in the diet much higher. The disadvantage here is again it's only going to last us for so long so if it's a really long prolonged dry period uh, we're still going to need to feed out supplement feed. The other disadvantage is that our management skills need to be really spot on here because we're going to such high covers if we don't end up eating out the paddock properly, we're going to have poor quality for the next round. Or if we don't go in soon enough and that first leaf dies off, again we're going to be lowering the quality of the feed. The last option I have under this one is standing hay or deferred grazing. So what we're talking about here is if we're shutting up a paddock for dairy, uh, for milking cows, 
we're talking about three to four weeks. If we're going to shove a paddock for dry cows, it's uh, six to eight weeks. And then we'll feed those paddocks off as break fed crops type scenario um, and slow down our rotation. So the advantage here is that we'll be able to slow down our rotation and keep a high percentage of grass in the diet. The disadvantage is that if you're going to be milking off this grass, it's going to be quite steamy and uh, lower quality, so it will impact on the milk production. Also, because it is steamy, uh, the cows are going to find it more difficult to chew down to good residuals, so there might need to be a bit of mechanical correction heading into the autumn. Uh, the next option is ryegrass, coxfoot and clover swords. So here what we're wanting to do is have a seed mix of 5 kgs of coxfoot to 12 kgs of ryegrass with clover on top per hectare and, um, and that will be our, our uh, sward mix over the whole farm. Uh, the advantages of having coxfoot in the sward mix is that it has a high proportion of growth through the summer months and it has a deeper root so it will have more access to water and we'll be able, again we'll be giving uh, supplying more leaf and more uh, growth through the summer months so as the dry period comes in we can keep a high percentage of uh, grass in the diet. The disadvantage is of having coxfoot in the sward is that uh, on the shoulder period so in uh, early spring and late autumn uh, this is when it has its lowest growth periods so uh, it's actually going to affect us in terms of the amount of grass we have on hand and our rotation speed and allocations. Uh, the other disadvantage to coxfoot is that it's got a slightly lower quality of feed than uh, ryegrass, but it's not going to impact us too much there. And the next option is ryegrass and clover plus tall fescue and clover. Um, so what we're wanting to do here is have about uh, 20 to 30 percent of the farm um, in a tall fescue clover mix and the rest in ryegrass and clover mix. Now the reason why we had them separated out into uh, different paddocks is because they have different establishment rates and temperatures so if we had them in the same paddock one will end up out, out competing the other. Um, or, uh, alternatively there is um, on the market now uh, hybrids between ryegrass and tall fescue uh, which could be a good option uh, just to put in the seed mix as well. So the advantage of having tall fescue is that it has a really high op uh, optimum growing temperature so uh, as the summer months come in it's going to keep on growing well into the 30 degree temperatures. Also it has a very deep tap, uh, very deep rooting plant, so it's got very good access to water. The disadvantages of coxfoot is that uh, it doesn't carry well through the winter time, so you're going to need to completely graze that out. Uh, also, it's uh, very slow growing in the summer time, uh, sorry, the spring time, so it's going to impact on your spring rotation planner. Uh, also, you're going to need to be very onto it with the management of the tall fescue as any, any covers going over 3,000, you're going to really lose quality. Again, it's like coxfoot and it's slightly uh, less quality of feed than ryegrass. So the last option I have here is uh, planting a summer crop. So this could be anything from uh, turnips to chicory to plantain to whatever you want. And the idea is to break feed this crop out and to enable you to slow down your rotation. So the advantage here is that as I said, you'll be able to slow down your rotation and keep a high percentage of forages in your diet going forward. Uh, you'll also be able to work this in with your uh, reseeding program as well. The disadvantages to a summer crop is that uh, you're actually going to be lifting your average uh, your, your demand per hectare uh, from the time you take the paddock out through to the time period that you start grazing it. So you're going to impact on the amount of silage you're going to be able to make. The other disadvantage is that if the dry period comes early, you're either going to need to forego yield or feed out supplement to enable the plant to get to full yield. Um, so these are the options I have. Obviously each of them have their own advantages and disadvantages, but to, for you to find out which one is best for you, first of all you need to work out what sort of time frame you're wanting to uh, mitigate. And then once you work that out, then you'll be able to work out which one is going to uh, fulfill your needs the best. It could be a combination of a few of them, um, but whatever that is, um, we're here to help. So if you're wanting some bit of help around this, please contact your nearest pasture profit consultant.